So hello everybody. Uh, hope you uh, can hear me loud and clear. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today at the first uh, Top in Tech uh, webinar series. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting time ahead. Um, this is a talk show where we're going to actually look at, uh, you know, try to create a more in-depth understanding about technology, especially with, you know, all the changes that uh, is going to happen post uh, COVID-19. I think, you know, uh, the outbreak has really forced us to innovate, to rethink what we do and how we're going to do things. Uh, and we're trying to bring you technologies and companies that we think um, are really going to help us with this changed journey as, as we go forward. Um, there are a lot of new technologies out there, people coming up with new products, new thinking, new ideas, new business models, uh, and, you know, working with consumers, with companies, uh, with the government as well. Um, I think, you know, uh, with the pandemic, there's going to be less uh, uh, possibilities for people to go out there uh, and to get in crowds. So we really have to adopt our strategies. Um, and we're very happy to have um, uh, Vix here from uh, Experati uh, to really talk about IoT. We think IoT and big data will be a big part of it, this. Um, um, so we're very happy to have them here. A big thanks to Kini Events uh, for organizing um, today's event uh, in partnership with Malaysia Kini, Digital News Asia, and Scale Up Malaysia. So a big thanks to all our partners. Um, so without further ado, uh, I bring you Karamjit, who will moderate the session. Karamjit, of course, you know well from um, Digital News Asia, and uh, Vix, who's going to, who's the CEO of Exparati, uh, who's going to talk about IoT and Sigfox. Over to you, Karamjit. Okay, very good. Thank you, Prem. Uh, welcome, everybody. I, I really don't know how the, the, the new normal is going to be over the next 18 months, at least. Uh, but, you know, like you say, we've got to be brave and we've got to be bold and we're going to be open, right, to accepting the changes that are coming. And I think part of this being brave and, and being bold is, is having to adopt technology at, at, at a deeper level than what people would, would have wanted to. So this has accelerated the pace. And I think uh, Munira Lui, from, uh, who's, in the, who's one of the leaders in the global business services space in Malaysia, said that digital is now the de facto, you know, normal already. It's it's not something, you know, sexy or good to have. And as, as companies grapple with what, what that means, right, to make it the de facto, uh, sessions like this will hopefully uh, help them, scare them into action or, or make them realize that, you know, it, it's now or never, right? And everybody's in the same boat, right? Uh, you end up running out of superlatives to describe the situation we're in, which is uh, affecting everybody from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, right? A to Z countries in the world. So, and our specific session today is about talking about uh, how, how uh, you know, uh, data, which is actually analytics also, right? And, and IoT can be used by organizations. So, you know, I think, first of all, uh, 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 Vix, before you get started, uh, maybe tell people about the difference between iot and 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 big data just so they get that ground level understanding which i suspect a lot of people already know but just for those who are who are just joining because they're curious about this session and then we can move on with what you what you have to share okay uh good uh, thanks uh to everyone uh now regard to iot iot is about connecting uh, devices that pick up uh, information from sensors and stuff and communicates via communication networks and provides the data into a big data platform. The big data platform is where you do visualization, you do analytics, you do predictive modeling and stuff. Now, there's one component we need to remember uh, that is, it's not in this topic, it's cloud computing. Big data actually can't exist without cloud computing because big data requires a lot of uh, data space and things in that, that aspect. So IoT is about collecting data, transferring over a communication network and placing it in a big data platform to do the analysis and for necessary action. Okay, understood, understood. I think so one is the collecting of the information and the other one is the to making sense of the information so you know what to do. So you're not just, it's, it's not just drowning you out. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let, let's get start started with your with some of the key points you want to raise. I think you brought up one especially point about uh, self monitoring that I found kind of intriguing. But uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, let you get started first, Vix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll just jump into the slide. So 
basically today if you 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 before this uh, covid situation iot and big data was very focused around government agencies enterprise using iot and big data they were using it for operational excellence process optimization to reduce costs and i'm sure most of you guys know industry 4.0 data cloud is all one of the a couple of key verticals in the industry 4.0 now with post covid uh, I believe you are going into the nation 2.0 where everyone is empowered. So where I'm looking at community, enterprise, and government agencies are getting involved in IoT and big data for the well-being of the people. You will notice uh, COVID situation, the well-being of the people had impacted the economy. All right, so it's important to bring the community into the process of IoT and big data. And the key part is self-enforcement. So you actually... Uh, empowering the community to actually uh, self-enforce the situation. Example, making decisions on their own uh, based on data, whether to go to a certain area, to go uh, to visit certain areas for certain activities or make certain decisions on their own. So I, I think it's very important to realize that. So I see community making an impact in IoT and big data. Um, now, better monitoring. Uh, so key data points proactive so if you notice today everyone talks about oh we're going to have the mobile app we're going to start tracing people where they are what they're doing so we can actually manage potential pandemic actually that's not enough you need more data points so you look at mass movements you've got entertainment sports educational institutions religious centers now if you look at individual that's a mobile app that's fine but you also need to have other data points like people heat map of activities example uh very very good example is how many people are in the toilet in public toilets mm. right so you know okay. example wow. imagine there are uh, devices iot devices just counting number of people that enter the toilet and then there's a little light out there says red or green if it's red it says don't enter so it actually gives the individual some self enforcement hey i'm not going to enter the toilet because i know it's full you're giving some social distancing all right so that's heat map another it also uses the data for the the malls to manage cleaning so it's based on usage mm -hmm. all right so they know there's so many people have entered the toilet we need to go in and clean the toilet today it's all based on time every three all hours right. four yes. hours so usage exactly. is very important all right mm -hmm. activities then you go to environment so you you need to start having uh, devices, sensors that provide air quality, temperature in the malls, in public areas, events, religious centers. So you are giving the opportunity to individuals to decide. Imagine the air quality sensor tells in a dashboard in the, somewhere in the mall saying the air quality is not good. So you mm. will have kids. You say, let's not go in. Mm. Let's not go there. Let's okay. go somewhere else. So you're actually mm. empowering the community to make decisions with this kind of data. And the same token also for those uh, companies, the facility management companies who manage the building to also take yep. action to you know maintain the aircon because the data is there. And it impacts the business. If your air quality is bad, temperature is bad, people are not going to come in. Today mm. you walk to certain yeah. malls, you know, uh, Karam, you go to walk. Why is it so cold? You know, mm. and you don't know what's the temperature. And then you know, yeah. now you can't afford. You need to have sensors and giving data to the community. All right, so it's very important. Mm -hmm. The fourth one, I think it is must happen is uh, trackers for foreign workers and tourism. All right. Okay. Now you need to have uh, mechanisms or applications, the simple devices that are carried by the foreign workers, especially with mm -hmm. construction sites. All right. Mm -hmm. We then you have heat map. There are thirty-five construction workers at this location, in specific okay. location, and then if there are any situation, you can actually manage based on current and historical data, including okay. for tourism. Mm -hmm. All right, you can track them. I think it's going to be a norm in the future. It's not just getting a stamp in the passport and walking through. And the mobile app, not everyone's going to have a mobile phone to allow you to download an app. They're not going to allow that. So it's going to be simple, small devices, a practical, could be like a card size given to you as soon as you land. That, that tags you. It's purely simple data provided to the to the ministry that knows how many tourists we have, where they are. If there's a pandemic, we know how to manage them. How many are from China, how many from India, uh, South Korea, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you're able to manage them. And I think those are key data points that's required in the future to 
ensure not only for pandemic but also the well-being of the community, the quality, the safety, and the security. I think it's very important. So this is where I see many new rock stars in technology coming up after post-COVID. Really? We we're looking. Mm. Yeah, I, I I believe these are the guys who are going to come out and come with application and the technology and solutions to to actually address this four key areas all right now Interesting. i think i think, okay. uh, I think uh, just uh, uh, just before you go i think when you talk about individual mobile app and i think the government has released an app called my sejahtera uh, it Correct. was developed by mimos if i'm not mistaken uh, i coincidentally just last night somebody I was talking to said they they have the app with them and uh, they they happen to leave their 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 condo and and go somewhere and he, and the person got an alert and he says that you are you are actually uh, uh, entering or you are in a red zone and he said he appreciated that because oh it, he didn't realize where he went was a red zone so it makes you take more precaution or decide you know to to leave actually so yeah uh, but then right. there's always issues about about you giving too much information lah but uh, I, I don't know how yeah, that will play out, but I know also when you talk yeah. about the future, you say future. Yeah. I think the future is here already here, right? This COVID thing has Correct. forced the future onto us today. Yeah. So you're not so, saying in in one month or two months time we got to resolve this yeah. today as we're speaking. There have to be teams out there working on this, right? Yeah, actually, very good point. So, uh, what I've seen the last twenty years, I've been in the tech telco industry. Uh, I've seen uh, technology uh, acceleration. You know. Mm-hmm. And the adoption is as cross. So we have are having challenges adapting to technology because it's accelerating very fast, all right. Mm-hmm. And what I've seen is with the current uh, COVID situation, it's made a lot of individuals and enterprises to realize the importance of accelerating the adoption also to the technology, mm-hmm. all right? Because so, so we, many- we, you know when when we. Uh, when we technology people, you know, uh, talk about accelerating adoption of technology, if if any of our our viewers out there they're they're listening in and you're uh, uh, you, you're a, you're a company out there, whether you're a medium company, you're a large company, uh, for them, what does adopting when we talk about technology now, we're talking about IoT and and big data. Big data. How yeah. do they start to uh, uh, to adopt? How do they start to adopt? You know, uh, say hey, I think we need to have our network IoT enabled now. So okay. the decision is uh, how is that decision made, and they're worried about cost, maybe Correct. right at Correct. a time like this. Everybody's super super careful with with taking out money, and I know yeah. you've adapted your business model in response to that, which I I like Correct. a lot. So yeah, how, how do they make that decision first and say I think we can do it now? We can wait three months. Okay, so uh, most companies today, uh, basically about providing solution is addressing problems. All right mm-hmm. today every company today from uh, SMEs to enterprise they do have problems that need to be resolved that's where technology comes in play example where x has played a part so we have logistic industries where they have containers and trailers all right these are non powered assets and they have uh, trucks mm-hmm. that they can track but unfortunately those container and trailers in the Malaysian uh, uh, statistics shows that every truck has got five containers or trailers, one to five. Now, these container and trailers are actually non-powered assets, and they don't know where they are. Mm. So they park it, they leave, they go around. It's based on Excel spreadsheet. And because they don't know where it is, they tend to spend time looking for it. It costs money, right? And mm. sometimes they misplace it. There's a loss. And and therefore, and then they go and purchase. They over-purchase that. So we have mm. simple solutions where you just put in a device. You can monitor them. This plug and play is non-intrusive, battery operated up to five years because you have a nationwide network. They can have a dashboard that says, okay, I know where my containers and trailers are. Therefore, I can pick them up on the way, tell the driver to pick it up, and I don't have to buy more. So I can optimize my assets. So that's one, one example. The other example, that's only on, on ex parenti part, but there's also other examples where companies have uh, processes that are still very manual. All right, mm. so they need to adapt uh, new processes, new technology. Therefore, they can actually embrace young generation. My my challenge with the young companies, mm. I mean big companies or even SMEs, they're still using desktops. All right, the mm. old Windows, and then they hire the okay. new generation of millennials. And these guys come in and say, "What's this? You know, why is it so <laughs> old? All right, why is it I have to click one, two, three, four before I start working?" And then the bosses say, "You are lazy." 
but actually the company mm. has not adopted technology and advanced forward so they need to start looking of application and solutions that actually fast track their pro- processes mm-hmm. so that they can actually okay. start to collaborate with other companies yeah and i think it's it's addressing pain points so companies need to look at that now yeah yeah i think there's a uh I mean, for uh, me, from my my yeah. Great. Sorry, uh, Kara. So for my part is, it's not about solving the problem. Also, you also from us as companies who are selling this solution, we should also help the client build the business case to justify the price of the solution. All right. So if they were to invest, uh, let's say ten thousand, they're actually saving hundred thousand. We have to help them build the business mm. case to justify. So that's one of the things we do. Second, in the current situation, we also came up with commercial models with a subscription base, so mm. for clients to adapt the technology without a massive impact in their cash flow. Mm-hmm. So we go through a long term. So that, that is something new you've done. Yes. Yes. Something okay. recent, yeah. So you you are walking the talk also when you say business models have to change, right? Correct. Absolutely. So we have like one one ringgit a day. Per asset to track, yeah, right. Hmm. A very simple subscription model. All right, so okay, that's good. All right, let's go on to your next slide. Then, sorry, no, I was cutting you off earlier. No worry. So, so the thing is, I talked about all the solutions that you're looking, but the right monitoring or everyone is responsible. So I go back to my fundamentals about people, process, technology. All right. So, mm-hmm. Karam, it is very important. We always think, oh, technology is going to make things better. It's not that. You need to also look at the people. In mm-hmm. your processes, all right. So when I see people, mm-hmm. everyone has to be accountable. Today is the time. Mm-hmm. Actually, during this COVID situation, and where we talk to our partners and customers today, we realize they are stepping up. They realize I mm-hmm. need to be accountable. I can't just depend on technology. Then you have to look at mm-hmm. the processes that I have today. How can I automate those processes? How can I do mm-hmm. remote monitoring so I don't have to send my people? Today, what we are doing is remote webinar. Uh, the whole similar, mm. you know, where we physically been at the location. So, so we are starting to look at processes to improve. All right, then mm. the adoption of IoT and big data becomes very, very productive and fruitful. So I, I've mm. had many clients who came to me. Hey, mm. Can you solve this problem? We say, okay, great. Uh, I've got this. This this is a problem. We solve it. But we also say you need to solve your process and the people. Then we say, what do you mean? You need to train your people to understand mm. the technology. You need to change your processes because we don't. You cannot adapt the technology. So it's people process mm-hmm. technology, and that is why the future is about right monitoring, not the better monitoring. You have to do the right thing by people process technology, and it's outcome based mm-hmm. economy. Today, the future is all about outcome based economy. It's not about I, I like this technology, I got to adapt it. What yeah. is the outcome? What's the results mm-hmm. I'm going to get? Then comes the self enforcement is the new norm, mm-hmm. where you're empowering individuals. Example, uh, Karam. We are also mm. community, but we also run companies, all right. We also work for mm. government agencies, so we are not mm. just communities, but we also part of the whole system. So we need to remember whatever decision and actions you take in relation to technology, you're also going to impact the community. So you need to be, uh, how to say, reliable and accountable for your decisions. Okay. 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 Sounds uh, very you know, outcome based is a is a is a big term. Huh? When you talk about outcome based, it's yeah. not just input based. You, you you deliver a project for someone, wash your hands. Okay. Correct. Move on to the next sale. So it's it's yeah. much more uh, ecosystem and holistic. Correct. So that's why the future is about no more supplier customer. It's all about partnerships. Uh, you know we wow, used to use that term. Those days, Karam, you look at all the training documents, uh, books written yeah. by. Uh, experts, oh, we all about partners. We talk the talk, but we never did it. It's about supplier. Mm. I don't care. Okay. You you deliver, I I will pay you kind of thing. Today, it's becoming a reality. It's all about outcome based. Yeah. You need to work with your clients. Make sure the solution that you had deployed actually re- deployed. delivers the outcome they wanted. Therefore, yeah. you are there on the long term. All right. It's very mm. important to remember that from outcome based. Uh, so whoever yeah. is looking at working with clients, you need to think about outcome. So the business case okay. is important. Okay. Yeah, and it's um, immediately so, a, a long-term relationship ready. You know, even if the yes. if the if the so-called actual implementation is done, you cannot just walk away. You got to you got to still Correct. be there. And, wow. Okay. And the thing is, Karam, today is reputation. Everyone know who you are, how you mm. deliver. People will talk the talk, right? 
So it's not only about the solution. I go back to people process technology. It's how you yep. en engage with your client, your professionalism, right? The processes is your process and their process align. Mm. You know? So you have to yeah. understand each other's process when you're engaging their project management methodology and yours need to be aligned. So it's very important mm. to understand. Then the technology can be aligned. My solution will fit yeah. into their tech, existing tech platform. So it's very holistic yeah, yeah. approach. And it has to happen. It's yeah. beginning to happen now. Okay. Beginning so I'll go It's going to accelerate. I think you, uh, you won't see customer service rep anymore. You'll see customer success rep, right? Correct. Or yeah. customer success yeah. officer. That's right. Yeah. Yes. You know, so okay, actually, yeah, so the, yeah, all these time. things will come in. You know, uh, I'll just go to the next slide. So actually, I got the last two more slides. You know, uh, mm. so I have to ask, or my recommendation to to the people who's in the audience and everyone else out there is that okay. corporate humanity. All right. When I say corporate humanity, you must understand this is where large enterprises must know that you yourself depend on SMEs. Almost ninety percent of our business is from SMEs, all right, economically. Yeah. So we need large yeah. enterprises to have support the SMEs. Don't wait for the government to give money. A very good example, I, I work in, a, in the telco industry, right, for 20 years. All the big boys mm. out there, mm. they will excuse the, you know, the SMEs, oh, I'll pay you later, 90 days payment term, you know, I, I, you didn't do wow. this. So the small guys struggle, all right? So this is a time where the mm. big boys need to step up and say, listen, we understand you are part of my ecosystem of business. So right. let's sit down. Let's come up with some creative commercial models. Let's look at the payment terms. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll give you some advanced payment, all right, so that you can mm -hmm. pick it up. This is where I'm looking at large enterprises. I've seen globally other parts of the world, Dell doing that, you know, in the oh, US, okay. helping them out. Mm -hmm. So th then mm -hmm. you have to have joint initiatives where you start sharing technology. Right. So when you start sharing technology, when you're adopting IoT and big data, start sharing it with SMEs. Hey, come, let me, mm. I build this together. Why don't you add a few more licenses and bring you into the system? All right. You mm. need to start thinking more collaborative and co-creating uh, partnership with SMEs. It's very, very important because large enterprises cannot sustain on their own if SME starts dropping. Well, yeah. They may not see the impact. All right. So we need the reason why I'm asking for corporate humanity is the future is because I need a predictable economy. I need a sustainable growth. I need the adoption of technology. So creating a level playing field for everyone so that we can collaborate with global players. Mm. All right. So okay. it's very important. So you've got a community and environment. All right. That's my first and ask. And I guess our big companies have to take the role. And the good thing is when you mentioned a telco space, I think the telcos have not been adversely affected by the, the you know the economic squeeze that we're all facing, right? There's even more demand for their services, right? Uh, and they already a lot of them are already expanding into the enterprise space also, where they're competing actually with your traditional technology vendors. So yep. you know, for for you to say that you're asking for telcos, say you start maybe the ball rolling with this corporate humanity, uh, you know, philosophy of doing business. It, it makes sense. You're not yeah. asking a, a big boys who are being squeezed, right? Yeah. Because the thing is, the telcos are still making money because everyone makes the call, but there are a lot of SMEs supporting that infrastructure, mm. maintenance of tower and stuff. They're all small SMEs, all right? These guys are impacted. Yeah, yeah. So this is where mm. I'm expecting the big boys to come in. Okay, let's look at that. I said, pay them. If you are not paid them, pay them now. You know, shorten the payment mm. terms because it, it will help them, and which I've seen it's yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Right? So that's why I, Super I'm looking important for, now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm looking at corporate humanity. So I, I'm looking at mm. all big companies who come and say, this is my corporate humanity agenda. This is what I'm going to do okay. for SMEs, which impacts community and environment. So do you uh, right? just think to this? So are you seeing you an example, anywhere in the, in the SMEs, world? Ah, okay, example. No, so example, so I'm saying. Uh, today, you know, if you look at, you go back a bit of uh, history, you look up Dell in US when the times were bad, they came out and said, okay, I'm going to come up with a pool mm -hmm. of money to help all the small SMEs that were supporting my business, the device component makers. Mm -hmm. All right. So that, that's an example there. Now, coming back to this, very, I know it will happen if you don't do SMEs who, who actually have trucks and equipment and tools. All right. So they provide services and support to the telco and yep. 
those uh, tractors and uh, trucks and uh, equipment, gents, environmental issue. All right. This is an example. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of places that are not taken care of. Then we become a community issue. Okay, understood. understood. So identity is so important while we wait for the government to step in. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let's so go to your to last my, uh, uh, last talking point. Last yeah. slide. My second ask is: I'm looking for the government to create a ministry of data. All right. Wow. There needs to be okay. a ministry. A ministry that actually we could be the first because we can benchmark Estonia. Estonia is a digital uh, society. Oh, is it? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And you can enhance based on what they have done. But we need a ministry of data. We could be the first in the world where we are collecting data, which is I call high level data, and provide the data to okay. people and economy. So, example, uh, I, I'm an individual, all right? I've got kids, example. Mm. So, I, I need to make a trip to a certain location. I will have an app, mm. it will tell me the air quality of that place and how many people are around there. Mm. So I will say, I'm not going to go. Okay. Or oh, there's less people, I will go. So we need to start collecting that kind of data. Same with from an economy perspective. How do I expand that area, construction, road, movement of, uh, of people? So what do I do? When, when do I start construction or manufacturing, etc.? So it helps people understand the information. So Ministry of Data needs to collect this data and provide a metadata okay. for public mm -hmm. and enterprises and government agencies. Okay. Interesting. Something I think new, if you, yeah. I think something uh, KJ Kairi Jamaluddin should look at. Okay. So I, but I think if you, if you talk about a ministry of data, then uh, you obviously, and I think actually when you mentioned KJ, I, I disagree with that. I think uh, just spontaneously. Sure. But this is an interesting uh, observation by you, a suggestion. It, it has to be a technocrat, I think. You know, somebody seasoned in technology. And, and the name that, I mean, somebody like, like Badli Sham, the former CEO of MDEC, or even then the other former CEO of, of MDEC, uh, uh, Yasmin Yusuf, right? Somebody like them would be yeah. ideal. Because you cannot have, absolutely, you cannot have a politician running this. It has to be led by a technocrat, you know, uh, uh, you know who, who knows the ecosystem well, who's familiar with technology, can play around with it and can understand the business implications of technology. So it, it, I don't think it, uh, yeah. smart as, as KJ is, I think uh, he, he cannot, uh, somebody like him. So uh, no, no politician with an Ivy League education qualifies, I think, to do this, whether they have Ivy League education or not. <laughs> so actually, Karam, you have a fair point. I, I, I agree with okay. you. Uh, it has to be a, maybe like an M, another MCMC. Falls under mm -hmm. uh, the Ministry of uh, whatever uh, innovation, but there is a separate entity itself that is given the authority to manage it and can have those people or technocrats who understand it, right? And this data is actually going to help yeah. us to help even startups. Mm -hmm. The startups want to do something new. Where is the problem mm -hmm. points in the country? Right? It's mm -hmm. a lot of year and say. So these are information. So this is an open data. data. So it's gonna. Okay, so it's an open data platform where even you're saying uh, private companies can access it, right? So obviously it's Correct. anonymized, la, so okay. Correct. Metadata, high level, so they can understand, all right? And mix it. So you have to take it. Uh, I would say we have to start stage by stage. There's a strategy I have in mind, how you need to mm. set up a ministry of data so that you actually get the importance of the ministry of data is getting government, enterprise, mm. and community coming together. Community, yeah. Because today no, no, it's I... people... Self enforcement. People need to take yeah, some yeah. action. All right. So exactly. that's why I always yeah. be, believe data is potential power until data in action is power. Mm. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Earlier one. So you followed your quote with a quote from Einstein, lah. So you're on the same level <laughs> with Einstein now. <laughs> no. 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 Far away from that. <laughs> I think he's got okay. more hair than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Enviable. Enviable. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So you, this is your second ask then. Okay. So so. Uh, what else is? Uh, what else are you seeing now? And 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 also, I think uh, before I forget the question, have you in the past week or two had uh, 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 new clients approach you to talk about things that they can do? And you know that they're only approaching you because of the situation we're in now. It is accelerating, you know, uh, uh, their their need to to do something. Correct. So we we have seen the last couple of weeks uh, clients approaching us because there's a need to remotely monitor certain activities okay. 
uh, because they can't mm. send people there. So they need some sensors to pick Absolutely. up the data. And because we have a nationwide okay. network, we can implement that mm. very quickly. Second, they also there's a need to monitor workforce, uh, especially when mm -hmm. the government start to leave for construction sites to start uh, keeping the economy moving. They need to to track the workforces because the those construction workers don't carry the mobile phone everywhere. All right. No, so no, these no. simple devices that we have, a single charge will last up to six months, giving them enough data to know oh, where wow. all the workers are. So the ministry ministry mm -hmm. also is able to monitor if there's a, another round of pandemic or another issue mm -hmm. search and rescue, they can know these are the activities mm -hmm. that they can actually mm -hmm. zoom in. So it's beginning to see that okay. remote monitoring requirement to pro automate the processes for that. Mm -hmm. So you guys are going to be busy la, or you already are busy, right? So with, with this request coming in. Yeah, we are busy. Actually, to be uh, upfront with you, Karam, I see post-COVID, we will see new rock stars in the tech industry. That we've never seen mm. before. There'll be a lot of creative guys out there who will come up with new innovation solutions, will become the next rock star in technology. I always believe during tough times, there'll be mm. there'll be superheroes coming out of it. And these mm. are the guys that are gonna come out with new ideas. And so we are looking for those uh, individuals or startups to help support them to be the rock star. Mm. Yeah, because you're the, you're the layer already, you're the, the infrastructure level already there, right? Correct. So they will create solutions, you know, products based on this layer already existing there. Correct. And we also have a global yeah. uh, network. Sigfox is a global technology. Of course, yeah. So we yeah, bring yeah, in correct. proven technology solutions in there. Yeah. yeah, solutions you can do global roaming. So there's a lot of, yeah. because to be honest, today uh, you'll be less traveling overseas now individual mm. businesses so they will yeah. be sending items from a to b so they need to okay, track okay. those items assets so mm. this is where this comes to, to play mm. okay yeah definitely i think we've got a couple of questions i just want to ask i think a a, a dennis mcmohan just asked the, the kind of hygiene question do you act as an uh, uh, as an si as well or you're only like a, a network operator he used the word network manager okay so we are Purely a network provider, purely an IoT network. Mm -hmm. All right, we have mm -hmm. deployed a nationwide network. We have covered eighty-five percent of the Malaysian population. We continue to densify. We build an ecosystem. When I say ecosystem, mm -hmm. where we build an ecosystem of technology partners, where device makers, uh, platform uh, uh, developers, big data mm -hmm. providers, even we work with the big boys and small boys, and mm -hmm. then we have the strategic partners that help us test some of these solutions are academic institutions we also have partnership with oh, academic. And magic okay. all right because academic yeah. institution is very important because we need uh, iot big data uh individuals in the future so we are trying to uh, create awareness we work very closely with sunway ilabs and stuff with met and his team all right uh, so then okay. to go to market what we are doing is we have a lot of SIs, local SIs, and global SIs mm. that come to us and say i have this problem do you have a solution yeah. So we solution. provide the solution to our local SIs. They then go yeah. and engage with the client. We do That's not, we, we avoid engaging any commercials with the client directly. We provide the technology and solution. Local SIs manage the clients, mm. right? So that's why when I earlier when I said about businessly, uh, train actually our SIs how to think like that. It's no more selling something mm. sexy. It's about what is the outcome? What's the business case? All right, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So most of our solution or use cases have business case justification. So you can know how to justify mm -hmm. the solution. All right. So we, we work to yeah, SIs. Yeah. Most of our business are SIs and all value added partners that are focused on agriculture only or health current uh, offering to my clients. Okay, well, you mentioned agriculture before. I, there's, a, there's a few more questions, but uh, what do you mean by agriculture? How do you work with agriculture? Is this with government? So in agri no, we have uh, government also with private uh, because there's small farmers, there's the durian farmers, uh, okay. pineapple farmers, all right? So uh, agriculture today, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they have to uh, visualize or uh, monitor uh, soil moisture, the pH level of okay. the uh, soil, uh, how yeah. much fertilizer is put manually? They have to send someone, pick it up, mm -hmm. come back, test. So now we have sensors that you can just put it on the on the ground, 
and remotely you can monitor and get the information in real time. And these sensors will sit mm -hmm. there for, for years, three, four, five years without any power. It's wow. all battery powered, battery powered. All right. Wow. So that's one okay. example. Uh, we also have mm -hmm. an agriculture, which is very interesting. We did a project uh, in a plantation where they wanted to monitor uh, issues of uh, in, in uh, uh, rats, all right? Rats, uh, pest okay. issues in, mm. in the plantation, all right? Okay. So what they have, which is very interesting, which we didn't realize, they have uh, owl homes, burung hantu, all right? They have actually built okay. uh, owl homes in the corners. So when if there's any uh, owl in there, they know there's a lot of rats around there. Oh. Okay? Okay. So the problem is they have to climb up to see whether there's an owl. Mm. So what we did was we just provided a simple device inside the howl home to see if it's occupied, not occupied. So in their dashboard, in the whole plantation, mm. they'll know out of the 25 owl homes, five is occupied in on the left corner on the on the north side. They know there's where a lot of pests. Mm. So they will not drop the fruits there. Mm. So very simple. And then nothing. Then you yeah, were tracking yeah, yeah. workforce, planters. They want to track all the workforce in the plantation. And there are issues there where they get in. Injured. So our devices have a panic button. Immediately you press the button to send an SOS signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you get lost. Okay. Because our, our network coverage goes into plantation compared to mobile coverage. Mobile, okay. You go into plantations also. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, because I think you said you're 85% you've covered the uh, population, 85% yeah. of the populated areas, right? Yeah. Not 85% of the country, la, but of no, 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 areas. no. Population. I'm still running a business, yeah. Karam. I can't simply put coverage. <laughs> <laughs> so, correct, so when it comes to areas there's no coverage, we work with our partners mm. and clients and see whether we provide coverage mm. on okay. a project by project basis also. Okay. So I think that there's a there's a like a comment here uh, from Benjamin. He's saying that you know, and I I think you can probably see the question also is that uh, we are already past the days of disrupt or be disrupted, right? I think yeah. uh, back in actually that's kind of interesting because that was actually the the name of the conference. Uh, the first conference that uh, uh, the Edge organized, you know, disrupt or be disrupted back like in 2004, 2006. <laughs> okay, but yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, instead he says you are facing the reality of how to make this uh, IoT integration and digitization a competitive advantage. Huh? That's interesting. In an economy with, with a lot of startups that have entered the market as digital natives. So I think he's, he's trying to say that you've got competition from the startups who are digital natives. Uh, so, as an existing yeah. business, how do you try to adopt IoT uh, and making it into a competitive advantage for you? Okay, so I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to answer the question. So, one thing I must tell you guys, you need hmm. to think practical, all right? Uh, all the disruption, uh, mm -hmm. all, all that stuff, it's very sexy, mm. but the new norm is, I'm not worried about disruption. I need practical... Okay scalable solutions that are going to help the outcome of my business. Mm -hmm. all right? okay. You know for a fact Uber and stuff, they're not making money. All right? They're disrupting. Yeah, 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 right? correct. So that, that is gone. Airbnb is gone. All right? So what the new norm mm. is, people are smart. End of the day, people want something practical, scalable and reliable correct. so that I can have a positive outcome. It's not, it's not about mm. sexy technology anymore. All right? So no, that's why yeah, there are a lot of new startups, think... new, yeah, new startups that come, they need to think like that. Am I solving the customer's problem? All right? Is my solution reliable and practical and also scalable for them so that they can manage it on their own? You need to empower your client to manage the solutions. All right? So if you come mm. up with a solution, it's so complex, it's not going to scale and it's not practical. Not going to scale, Okay, okay, interesting. I think uh, we've got a, a, a question from somebody like the, I, I, and I, uh, uh, I think Abdul Ghaffar likes your idea about the Ministry of Data. And he says that, and remember we were talking about the Department of Statistics Malaysia. So for yes. all of you out there, our Department of Statistics Malaysia is actually very good. They've got uh, amazing data points out there. Their website is a very, very good resource for you. Go and yes. check it out. You won't regret it. Correct. And I think uh, uh, Abdul Ghaffar is saying that uh, he says that our DOSM has already started to engage big data using blockchain and it's going to be offering data as a service. That's interesting. That's new to me. Yeah. 
So let's see. I mean, for me, see, that's why I keep saying if you provide data as a service, but the thing is, it's still okay. very much for enterprises and businesses. What about mm-hmm. community? Community, right? okay. Why should they pay to know whether the air quality is good or not to okay. go there? Right? So we need to be very practical because mm. if not, we'll have another pandemic again. Because oh, I want boy. to make sure, imagine you go to the food court, all right? Mm. I want to have sensors in the food court saying this table was occupied but not clean. Don't sit. Mm. Wow, the little sensors say, don't sit because it's not wiped and clean. Mm. Right? So you make the decision, all right? Yeah. So yeah, you walk yeah. to certain areas, you see a restaurant is, you no, know, people those days say it's, if it's full, the food is good. Now it's not anymore. Yes. It's yeah. full, I'm not going to go in. Correct, so correct, correct. Know, Amazing. I need, know, I need to know how many people are in there so that I make the decision not to go in. So do I need to yeah. pay for the data? So the data as a service, great, but the ministry of data is where everyone needs to collaborate and say, I will share some of my metadata to mm. still ensure uh, data protection so that mm. everyone can leverage, especially community and uh, educational institution, education, and also yeah. for startups. Mm. startups to see what are the problems in the in the country what what should i focus today when i'm coaching some startups when i was in, doing some stuff with magic some of the startups come up with uh, solutions but not really understanding the problem in the market mm. understood, right? understood so it's very important yeah i think the point you said about uh, it, it's not about the sexiness anymore it's about no more addressing a, a real business need and understanding the problem. If you don't understand the problem of the customer, yeah. there's no basis for you to even have a conversation with them anymore then. Yeah. Se- sexiness it, of tech is change. gone already. Sexiness of mm. tech is gone. Today is yeah. all about the outcome-based economy. You know, for, for some of you out there, I, I think a few days ago, uh, uh, the Korean government released a document, it's about 90 pages, it's about talking how they use, I they use the word ICT, which uh, we, people yeah. tend not to use anymore, this digital or technology, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. IT, but ICT, how ICT was integral to, integral to them in, in managing their, their, uh, their outbreak and how they're going to be leveraging on ICT to move into this post, you know, post-COVID world. So yeah. it's, it's definitely a part and parcel of life already, you know, whether Correct. you like Absolutely. it or not. Correct, correct. I think there's a question from David also talking about, I think he, uh, this is at 5.30, uh, they're basically saying that uh, apparently uh, uh, you could have unintended results with, with this uh, movement tracking. And apparently he said that Wuhan residents now prefer to walk from point A to point B because they find all the multiple QR scanning stations tedious and time consuming. Okay. And you know, this is in, in China where you're used to government telling you what to do. Uh, you're already okay. subservient to a big extent. Can yeah. you imagine something like this happening in the US where you're already seeing images of people walking with, with uh, you know, with rifles and all like protesting their demand yes. to, yeah. to, to live their life the way they want to live. And this is, you know, taking yeah. their rights away by imposing this lockdown. Yeah. So, I mean... The, there, there are many types of technology to address that that problem. So mm-hmm. one of the things that we have is it's a simple device you carry with you. There's no QR code to scan anywhere. You just okay. lead your life. You are self-enforced, but the data is to actually ensure your safety and security. You don't need mm-hmm. to scan. You just go mm. through a normal day-to-day life, get into the bus, we know where you are, can be used mm. for school kids and stuff. So it is all about, I go back to something practical and scalable. So mm. you, you just said what in China, people are scanning, oh, QR code, I have to scan. I don't like that. Mm. Right? Mm. So it's not practical after a while. Mm. Mm. It becomes very uh, disruptive to the day-to-day life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Right. So they, that's why it's very important to look at things in a practical manner. I'm not saying what they're doing is wrong. Maybe for them mm. it's right. But I think we as a nation need to look at what we can do based on our current uh, economic situation and the people that we have. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, the Western Americans, you know, like, they, they don't like to be told what to do. Mm. Right, so they will come out on the streets. So I, I actually think we have created certain governance. Therefore, with the MCO movement, we could manage it very well. So mm. people are understand and following it. Mm. I think uh, the the X factor in Malaysia is that uh, we've got this uh, 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 two two million at least or two and a half million illegal migrant workers. 
Correct. You know, uh, and to me, that's the biggest uncertainty and the danger to when MCO is relaxed also. And I, I, I don't know. And maybe that's not the purview of this discussion. But uh, you know, uh, how how do you how do you deal with that that you know uh, unknown? And because you know that they live in close quarters with each other, uh, and it's not that they're going to deliberately go out and infect people. But you know, they say the majority of people, when you end up having a, a COVID nineteen, you don't even display symptoms because your immune, your body is actually able to to deal with the virus, right? And you don't even have a fever with you, which is a consequence of your body trying to fight an alien invader. So, uh, I, I don't know how this, you know, uh, uh, self monitoring can work there when you've got people who are actually outside of the the legal system, right? <laughs> yeah. So the, actually, this is where I go back to the people mm -hmm. process technology, Karam. I think the okay. people are the employers who employ these people. So we as employers mm. must ask the question: Are you uh, a legal foreign worker or illegal? Mm. If you're not legal, I'm not going to hire you. So eventually, the mm. illegal foreign workers will start to leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Hopefully, so we, as leaders of organization, employees. So we need to take action. We can complain. Oh, you know, they're here. But you are paying them. You're saying, oh, they're cheap. Illegal. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are, you are encouraging that. At the same token, you're saying, oh, we need to make sure they don't go around creating problems for us. Mm. So that's why I go back no, to no. corporate. You may, Fine, if they're illegal, if they're good, go find a process to make them legal. Mm. Yeah, if you want yeah. them. So I think it's important. It's our responsibility to say no. We don't want to hire them. I think uh, definitely if to sum up, you know, what, what's happened has forced the future. The future has been forced onto the present. Right? It's already here. You know, guys like you and me and some of our more tech-savvy uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, audience know that all this is coming, you know. Yeah. At what at what pace you don't know, but this has been the the mother of all catalysts to to bring it here now, you know. So uh, yeah. companies have to deal with it. Like yesterday, yeah. Idris Jala was saying that uh, you know the first thing you want to do is to assess your cash flows. It's all critical right now, right? But beyond that, when you've got that a handle of that, you got to assess, you know, where is your business going to be? What what business are you still in? And how you're gonna, uh, you know, uh, carry forward with the business because business means serving a need of a customer, right? Yeah. How understanding how the customer needs has changed, and you have to adapt. Like you've adapted your model now, and okay. these are questions people are asking. And a lot of times, the answer to getting to that, uh, uh, the question, right? The answer to that question lies in in, in embedding technology Correct. into your company already in some way or form. So, Correct. and I know a lot of technology entrepreneurs I talk to said that what the solution they're offering have big demand now, but they just need to work out the model, how are they going to charge for that in a way that's, like you say, also humanistic, right? So it helps Correct. the customer, who, who the person who wants to be a customer, so they yeah. can serve their customer. Correct. So, so I think it's I, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think uh, companies need to look at their cash flow. At the mm -hmm. same token, I mean, I look at it. I mean, we have three ba the balance sheet, the income statement, and cash flow. Cash flow is very important. Then mm -hmm. the thing is, the income statement is where you bring in the revenue. So the revenue yeah. streams, you need to start studying it. Can I do mm -hmm. something different? Mm -hmm. Can I be creative? How do I bring this thing, you know, create new? I'm, I'm looking for new ideas of new incomes, uh, new revenue streams. Mm -hmm. I you think the be question creative. is not, I don't think, Vic, is can I be creative? It is, the question is, how can we be creative? It's no more an option, you know. I right. know. Every very, business out there, how can we be creative? Fair point. That's very true. How? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. No more can we. And then, by the way, you've got one vote for you to be the the uh, to be the new minister, ministry of data, la, in charge of the ministry of data. <laughs> you, you I you thought that was coming. You get there. You cross the bridge when you get there. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so interesting. I think there's just one last question. I think uh, uh, Suli Lim says that she works with insurance companies and. We are giving free devices to car owners, but they refuse to install. Uh, and I think she means that the insurance companies maybe refuse to install because they worry it's not secure. Okay. Uh, interesting. So that is called... Good question, Suli. That's the last question yeah. for us. Yeah. Okay. So that's usage-based insurance, UBI. Mm. All right? UBI. Uh, so yeah. basically, they're telling the uh, UBI, usage-based insurance. Now, the thing is to install that device, all right? Mm. You have to actually get it installed, connect to the battery vehicle. Okay. All right, uh, so or to the OBD thing. So there is a lot of intrusion to it. All right. So car mm -hmm. manufacturers, I mean, car owners don't want to 
impact the warranty. They don't want mm. that. All right. Okay. So that is why the adoption rate is very slow. So that's why we brought okay. some of the proven Sigfox technology from other parts of the world based on insurance for cars, mm -hmm. where a simple device is placed in the glove compartment. Oh, no wiring, okay. no plugging, just yeah. a simple device. Just place it there. And it only provides data every 10 minutes or one hour. And it's mm. used for very simple usage, very high level. Mm. It's used for uh, calculating usage patterns. Second, it's also for safety and security. When a car breaks down, mm -hmm. you call someone, they will mm -hmm. know exactly where you are. Mm. So it's non-intrusive. So that's what we're bringing into the country. In the next quarter, we're actually tested some devices. That's one of the devices mm -hmm. we're bringing into the country. Where it's a simple device. It's just less than six inches. I mean, sorry, three inches. You just put it in the glove compartment. That's it. They'll last for mm. five years. Five years. La. Okay. Yeah. I think Hanif, uh, Mohammed Hanif gave some points also about why vehicle drivers, you know, have an issue. La. Like you say, uh, yeah. warranty, uh, fault to the vehicle and privacy Correct. issues. So, Correct. Correct. Uh, uh, even in Singapore, you know, the track tracer, the tracer app that they have, only yeah. about a million people out of the six million have downloaded. And the, I think the Prime Minister, day before you said, still were urging people to download it, but people don't want. You know, it, to them, they are no. a big government. But also because yeah. you have to, you know, outside of all the hysterical headline, the yeah. reality is also that, you know, 80% of people are, are, are not impacted by the virus, right? It, 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 they, yeah. they, I think they've got immunity or somehow the virus not interested in them. So only 20% yeah. have minor symptoms and a few, you know, end up being in, in, in the hospital. And I saw an article yesterday to say that, look, the people who died would have actually died anyway. It's just accelerating their death. It's it's a right. bit of an, uh, it's a bit of a very harsh view right. to take. La. But they're saying right. that you're putting so much focus on so many people are dying, but all of us, are, the rest of us who are healthy are slowly dying because of all <laughs> these lockdowns you're creating. Correct. So can we just get real and, and just go back out there and, and you know, get back into society, but with social distancing, distance as the new reality, right? Correct. Not keep so, us in our homes anymore. And the Prime Minister is, uh, is going to talk again tonight and I yeah, think yeah. he's going to extend it. But Idris Jala yesterday said he doesn't think the government will extend it. So I hope they don't extend it. Like, my personal I think, one okay, to, will... to, to me, I think, I, I think the government will relax the thing. They start opening up a little bit. We okay. have to manage it. Uh, coming okay. back to your point, I, I don't know whether the audience knows you are currently being tracked by all your apps you have on the phone. Mm. Your Facebook app, your Google app is already tracking your movement. All right? Mm. And you say, oh, I don't want to be tracked. You actually be tracked. Mm. All right? So what the, what the government is asking you to put this the app in there to track is actually very secondary. So this is where I go back to your self-enforcement. If you talk about personal data protection, you need to know all the apps on your phone is already doing that. You need mm. to turn it off, your GPS location, if you turn okay. it off, then you won't get offers. Yeah, you won't yeah, know yeah. where's the closer. So it's a choice, all right? So mm. I, I personally believe if you got something to hide, then you won't want it, all right? Mm. And it, it, life, it, I see the personal data protection, to be honest, is going to change. Change. Oh, is it? Okay. I believe it's going to change in the new norm where your self-enforcement and you need to give certain data to the government so mm. to protect the nation. You cannot be selfish mm. anymore. Because I need to know activities of movement. I don't know what you did, but where you were. Mm. So it's to protect the nation. It can be for safety and security. If let's say a, there's a flood, you know who's around there. We can send how many search and rescue people to the site. Today, we don't okay. have the data. We're making and assumptions when you send us a search and rescue team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, people okay. have to change. Change. I think we'll we'll in, end with that. And actually, I remember a conversation I had about uh, uh, nine years ago with somebody from IBM. Because there were already, by then, you were already seeing security cameras, you know, coming into uh, uh, public places. And yeah. and he laughed at me when I talked about this security. How he said, Karamjit, you know, once you've got security, once you've got cameras observing things, seriously, you have to say goodbye to your personal privacy. Right. Very interesting. Correct. So Absolutely. maybe this is another thing to make us realize. Wow, it's it's a bit sobering. Actually, the the hair on the back of my <laughs> uh, my neck is actually standing now when you say that the realization that yeah. we have to slap ourselves and wake up and we have to give up yeah. on our, our our privacy. So, correct. Uh, you know, may, maybe everybody every month has got has got five days where they can do a blackout. Like, Look, these five days I don't <laughs> want to be traced, right? Right. Or those <laughs> days then maybe like, right to to the give right. and take, right? right. 
Yeah. I don't but know. So also, things are, are being worked out as we speak. La. Yeah. But the Personal Data Protection Act needs to change. It's mm. for the well-being of the nation. Not economy okay. only, but the well-being of the nation. Yeah, the economy yeah. and the Understood. people. So it needs to be okay. looked at seriously. Okay. Interesting. I think on, on that then we will... Uh, uh, we will end, end the show. I'm not sure if uh, Prem, you want to come on and have any last words or not. Uh, uh, you know, if not, means then we will probably just uh, 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 end the session. On, I want to thank you. Uh, Prem, Prem is, is yeah, Prem is, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, Vix. Thanks, Karamji. That was really interesting. I think some very good points. I don't know whether we will yeah. see a uh, Ministry of Data or not, but I think definitely <laughs> uh, we need to think. Uh, you know, that's how. Enterprises uh, need to think how they work. Governments also need to think about how should governments change in this new age. Uh, you sure. know what they should be investing in, what they should not. How do they yep. empower communities to react to the to the situation? So I think that was really uh, an excellent conversation. Thanks a lot, Rick. Thanks a lot, uh, Karamjit. And uh, no, 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 no. please Thank uh, you stay very tuned much. to talk about that, and we'll be bringing you some interesting discussion uh, every month. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Thanks, please guys. join us again next month when we have the next session, which is going to be on, on the future of work, right? So that's going to be really fascinating. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Frame.